Hello and welcome to this Boxing Day preview. Tomorrow on the 27th, AFC Bournemouth travel up to Stamford Bridge to face Chelsea. My name's Sam Davis. My name's Tom Jordan. And it's a while since we've done one of these shows, Tom, isn't it? Yeah, it feels like it as well. It does feel like a while, especially away day. What was the, what was the last away game? I can't remember because we had Everton at home, didn't we? It feels like, it feels like forever ago. Yeah. So yeah, looking forward to it, mate. Yeah, and on this preview, here's what's coming up. We go over our views on Chelsea, the squad so far, their transfer business, how they're doing and how we think they're going to do this season. We'll also hear their views on us, including some of their own fan opinions. We'll also get the latest team news from both Stamford Bridge and Dean Court and get the injury updates. And then I'll do my very best, it's going to be difficult, but I'll try and predict both sides, both 11s for the game coming up. Yeah, so after our League Cup game at Newcastle, the Cherries, they're away for our first Premier League game back after the break. It's now a 5.30 kickoff. The game is being shown live on Amazon. And Chelsea, Tom, mm. they're a side that we do OK against. However, yeah. it's been a while since we've been in the Premier League, but I just wonder if that form against them can continue because we did take a lot of points off them in the Premier League, didn't we? It was weird. And I mean, there was a few times where they were probably not on the best form, but we played them a few times where they were doing all right. Mm. I remember going there midweek. We were not playing well. They were on fire and we smashed them 3-0. Do you mm. remember? Um, We've got a weird, there always feels like teams have this team mm. and Chelsea will definitely know it and they'll be thinking, oh no. Um, yeah, so it'll be interesting. I mean, on paper, you, you think they should have too much, but that's been the case every time we have beaten them. I think the last time we went there, was that the VAR one with Dan Gosling? Yeah. So yeah, we've got a great record there, which is filling me with a bit of optimism, uh, which is, yeah, it might be, far. they're completely they're a different side. They're always, I think all these times we've beaten them, they've virtually had a different manager every time. Uh, I remember we beat him with Mourinho, Conte, yeah. Sari. So, yeah, um, be, be a different now. But I don't. Did we ever play a Tuchel team? I'm not sure we did. No, I don't we think we did. We missed that period, didn't we? So, Tom, quick trivia quiz. When we played them and won 3 0, who were our scorers? Uh, I'll try and do the order. Uh, Nathan Ake scored the last one, I remember that. So, Nathan Ake, Callum Wilson, and Junior Stanislavs. Yeah, and in our 4 0 home game against them, who scored? Charlie Daniels, Josh King, Brace, and David Brooks. Very good. I remember these games. It's almost that... like you know your ball, mate. Yeah, Glenn Murray in the 1-0. Dan Gosling in the 1-0. Yeah, so Chelsea sacked Thomas Tuchel after their away defeat in the Champions League against uh, Dynamo Zagreb. That was at the start of September. And it did also follow some disappointing results in the Premier League. And if we look at the Premier League table at the moment, mm. they are sitting in 8th place mate I mean they're eight points behind Spurs at the moment and really it's not good enough is it for them and even their form is not particularly great so they're going to be going into this game wanting to get a result and put their put their league campaign back together I think mm. under Graham Potter I think it's been an underwhelming start really for them yeah, it's, it's a difficult one because I think this is probably the first time, obviously, Abramovich is not there anymore. It feels like the first time they've got a manager that will, remains to be seen, but it feels more long term. Mm. So you're going to have a few bumps in the road before he installs you know, what he wants to do with, with the club. We all know he's, he's a very good coach, um, but they need to give this one time. I know in the past they, they haven't given managers time and it has worked well for them. They, they mm. win trophies nearly every season. Um, but, you know, Tuchel was not even the first manager that's been sacked after winning the Champions League. Di Matteo done the same. So, yeah, they're a club known for that. But like I say, different owners now. Um, and, yeah, I think it will take Potter a little bit of time. But at the moment, to be... I mean, they're nearly 20 points off Arsenal. Mm. I mean, that is crazy. But they've got... I think he, he needs to bring his players. They, they feel like they've got a lot of square pegs in round holes mm. and he's still trying to develop a few things. Maybe... I know they would have had a few at the World Cup, but maybe the breaks allowed Potter to kind of, you know, mm. instil his philosophy a little bit more. But... Um, I think if they stick with him, they'll be fine. They'll they just need to they do their best getting that top four this season, mm. and I think they can just then keep going. They've they've got money on those. So. I do feel for him a little bit. I've got to say, um, Graham Potter, because it's it's a it's a hard club to just uh, mm. you know try to get results at, at straight away. And he's he's playing Champions League football as well, and playing some very you know very difficult teams, and it hasn't been. Brilliant. I mean, when, when he took over, after six games, they were in sixth place on 10 points. Now, after 14, they're eighth with 21 points. So they're not, they're not really sort of keeping up with the pack, so no. to speak. And they are pulling away. I think any kind of European football forum would probably be... Yeah. He'd, he'd be content with it. But, yeah, you know, it's, maybe, maybe this is the time. 
maybe this is the time to take advantage. And yeah. Tom, talk, um, talk me through their season so far then, mate, because, you know, I think they started off uh, against uh, Everton, didn't they, at Goodison Park? Yeah, they won that one. I remember them just, just scraping that one. I think it was a 1-0. A um, and then, yeah, then they... then. Oh, then it was the Tottenham game, wasn't it? It was a good game, that. And they should have won that game and drew it. And then they got a spanking, didn't they? And that, I feel like that was at Leeds, wasn't it? Mm. And I feel like that was kind of, the writing was on the wall then. Mm. Um, oh, yeah, and I've just seen that. You've got the beat, beat Leicester. And then they lost Southampton. I can't yeah. remember losing Southampton. So you can see why it was very inconsistent, wasn't it? Mm. Beat West Ham, but then, like you say, they, they lost that Zagreb game and the, the writing was on the, on the wall for sure then. Um, yeah, they've been up and down in the Champions League. But uh, they still get some good results. They battered Wolves. <sighs> They, they picked up a little bit, but they still look a little bit goal shy at times, I think. There was the Brentford game they drew 0-0, the Man U game 1-1, they scored late in that one. And then, the you know, ironically got battered by Potter's old club, 4-1. And that was the weirdest thing, as I, as I said, I think he's a great coach. But he went to a club that he knew them. Mm. And like I remember the start, I think Sterling was like wing-back. And I was like, what are they doing here? Um, and then obviously... No mean feat to lose to, to City in the Cup, and um, but also lost to Arsenal and Newcastle. And well, they felt like big games, and in both of them they couldn't score. Well, they didn't win in the league in November or December, which is yes, absolutely are. scary. So, uh, you know, they're going to want... Lost their, in a friendly to Villa as well. Yeah, they, they're going to certainly want their first win. Of course, mm. you know, what we you always do on the previews is talk about their transfer activity and you know it's fair to say that they got a few new arrivals at the start of the season mate yeah they always do don't they um i mean i think there's one there's a few that felt like new signings that weren't so Colin gallagher and brozier mm. who come back from having good loans i know brozier's just got a really bad injury so i hope he's all right but Colin gallagher's a good player i think he'll i think potter will like him as well mm. he done really well he well he went in the world cup didn't he with mm. england i know he didn't play but um, Aubameyang was a weird one and I think if Potter was there I'm not sure if that would have gone through I think Aubameyang's a good striker he's, he's a goal scorer but there's a reason why Arsenal kind of let him go and look better for it yeah, um, yeah I'm not sure and he's getting a bit older and stuff now I think Koulibaly was a good signing I think he's a top centre half mm. I think we saw that bits in the World Cup he was a big signing for him Sterling was a weird one because City done that a few uh, Jesus went to Arsenal and it was like selling players to kind of what you consider rivals mm. shows how strong City are but we all know Sterling's a good player. And then another weird one was Cucurella. Potter sold him to Chelsea. Mm. And now he's... I mean, I don't think he would have sold him because he didn't like him. He would have sold him because he was Brighton and Cucurella. Um, what, what he hasn't started great, I don't think. And then Fafana's had a few injury problems, but he was a big signing late on from Leicester, wasn't mm. he? So they've, they've got some good players and they already had a bloody good squad, let's yeah. be honest. I mean, Thiago Silva was who saw what he did in the World Cup and... You know, Mount and Havertz, people like that. So they, they what got... players did they lose though? Because they lost, they lost a couple, did they? Yeah, well, Lukaku, the mad of one. Of course, like, I think he's yeah. still. A, I think he's only on loan, isn't he? Mm. It's a really weird one. He had a bad World Cup as well. Yeah, I don't know what's happened with him. He went. Um, they lost Werner. Didn't mm. work out. Did it? Emerson went to West Ham. Didn't work out for him. Uh, Batshuayi. Mm. There was no one. I thought the only one that they would have been gutted to lose, but they knew they were losing him. Was Rudiger, mm. who went to Madrid, didn't he? Real Madrid. Because he was a top seller off, but I think they're looking at Koulibaly as being a direct replacement mm. there. So, um, that I, I, they, they, they're if anything, they're a bit stronger. I think. Do you think? Uh, do you think they're a likable club or not? Uh, I struggle to like them, I, and yeah. I don't know why. I don't know. I've got no basis for it. Um, I used to. I mean, there's a lot of clubs that I like it now. I, I used to like Chelsea because they were kind of like, well, can they break in? Like when they had, mm. you know, Yazolas and uh, mm. Di Matteo, Petrescu, them sort of players. And now it just feels like they just, they've just they chucked a bit of money and now they've got loads of trophies. But I think I'll start to like them again know. under the Graham Potter era, I yeah. think, maybe. Because... I think it's the sacking managers thing was mm. always hard to take as a neutral, but they have got, even before the money, they have got a bit of history there, the the club. I, I, I don't overly dislike them, to be honest. Um, they're okay, but um, do I want them to ever like win all the trophies they do? Probably not. No. But I don't mind them. They've got some likeable players in there, you know. Got a few that, that represent England as well, which always helps. Um so yeah, and like you said, mate, I think Potter is you want to see good young English managers do well. So I think that will help the neutrals probably warm to them a bit more. And um, I've always had good days at Stanford Bridge, so I can't complain too much. P pints are expensive, though. Oh. Let's check out our head-to-head -head record against them. And you can see it on screen there. Really, pre-2015, our games against Chelsea, they were few and far between, really. But then something happened. We got promoted and then we played them in December, December the 5th, 2015. Glenn Murray, or was it Charlie Daniels who got yeah. a touch on the header? Either way, 1-0. Oh. It Unbelievable. Was, it was amazing. It was a Mourinho, wasn't it? Mm. Um, manager at the time. And I remember we were just, 
we were just grinding, thinking we can nick a point. It'd be amazing, get a nil nil draw, and then Mazza come up with a header. So yeah, that was and that felt big, didn't it? Didn't we beat Man U the game after? Yeah. And that was the, that was the catalyst, wanted to stay up that season. So yeah, that was a one of it would be a lot of Bournemouth fans, one of their favourite memories really. Uh, going to the bridge, didn't expect anything, and got that win. So that was great. Then we had a few defeats, didn't we? Ooh. I know we lost at home that season, didn't we? Um, and then we played him. I feel like we played in the yeah we have played him in the league cup a few mm. times and just got beat. Have we had a spank it? We had one. Oh, it's one three nil defeat. Yeah. But really we've we've always competed well. Um, I think our most recent was the draw, wasn't it? Yeah, because that was just before COVID. Yes, it was. Yeah. Lerma header. Mm. Yeah, two two cool. draw. Yeah, I remember that one. That was a good point. Um, but yeah, mentioned all the the wins that we've had against them, mate. We've we've done all right. Mm. I mean, it's. It's strange because every time we played them, we've always thought we're not going to do them again. And I think the best yeah, performance was the four 0 at home. Yeah. I mean, that was ridiculous. Abs- I think nil nil at half time, and I think we were thinking, oh, we're doing, we're yeah, doing all right. Yeah. And it was and everything. So Charlie Daniels was on the bench, and didn't he just lose a, a red? Was it his grand granddad? Yeah, just, yeah, just passed, yeah, so, and he was on the it. bench, and so it was kind of like quite sentimental mm-hmm. that they brought him on at the end because the game was won, and he scores a header oh, straight away, and he it. never scores. Um, and it was Chris Metham's debut. Yeah, it was, yeah. Right in, so, yeah. yeah, we've got some good memories against them, mate. Let's, let's have another. Yeah, I love it. Mm. So, what about the team news then? Well, for AFC Bournemouth, it's, um, we're actually in an okay position, Tom, aren't we, really? Yeah. There are players that are coming back, mm. um, players that are training. David Brooks is back on the grass. Neto is as well. Lloyd Kelly could be available for this one, mate. Yeah, it sounds like it, because he was nearly available by the... By the sounds of it, against Newcastle, Ooh. so yeah, that'd be big for us getting our skipper back. Lerma, it sounds positive, like he might be might be available as well, which is good. Not so much about Tavernier. Looks no. like he's probably going to still miss out. Um, and Pearson and Rothwell were just ill, weren't they? So Ooh. they should be all right. Um, and obviously, from if it's a Chelsea watch from a ball perspective, we only had a couple at the World Cup, Ooh. and they were both Welsh, um, Kiefer Moore and Chris Meppham. So obviously, went out in the group stage. So they and they both played, didn't they, Ooh. in the week? So we're all right apart from that. Um, just Neto, I don't think is going to be. I don't think Neto and Brooks are quite ready, are they, in back of mm. training? So, still missing our technically number one goalkeeper, I suppose, But and Tavernier. But apart from that, we, we look all right. Mate. And Chelsea, I think they had, what, up to 12 players that are oh, out in Qatar for the World Cup. But they, they have got um, a number of players that are out, including yeah. uh, Wesley Fafana. Um, also, what else? Uh, like Reese James as well. I think he's, they reckon he'll be all right because obviously really? he just he go, because of England the amount of right backs not we have, ideal no because the amount of right backs we have we just didn't take a gamble on him did we but it sounds like he's been training and he played over an hour mm. in uh, in a friendly forum I know Broja's out mentioned that earlier he got a bad one and it's really difficult when they've had that many players at the World Cup I know I think Kante will still be out uh, Loftus Cheek. But there'll be players that are returning. You think, Alf, are they going to you know oh, Ben I, Chilwell is he Chilwell's still out I believe yeah um, and then you I look at people like Thiago Silva and stuff I think. He's not injured, but he's he went a long way with Brazil, and he's mm. he's in his late thirties. Yeah. So surely he's going to need a bit of a break. Ziyech and Kovacic as well went far in the World Cup, so it does make it difficult Oof. to. So yeah, I think it's really tough to predict that. So I'm going to give it a good go, but it, there could be a lot of options for it. Depends which ones have recovered better from their World Cup breaks, I guess. So who's going to be in Tom's team? We're going to do that very shortly. But before that, we always like to get Chelsea's fans' opinions on this fixture and also the. the the media in general, worldwide. So we scoured YouTube to see what people are saying, what people are predicting and uh, what they're hoping to get from this fixture. It's a strange one. Bournemouth, a little bit of a bogey team, whereas, but then again, Chelsea has a lot of bogey teams, <laughs> like too many <laughs> bogey teams. Um, but I think my biggest worry for Bournemouth would be the fact that they've had just basically another pre-season. Like, that, that's about it. Like... They've only had two players go to the World Cup, both Welsh players, so they kind of went out pretty soon. So it's a bit irrelevant, really. Like they they've pretty much had a few games that like in a preseason. They're ready. The managers they come in. Uh, this will be his first official game, I think. But they've come in, give them a bit of time. You know, they've just they're re ready for this season. It's like they've had a lovely break. It hasn't been this kind of disruptive World Cup for a lot of the bigger teams. I think a lot of the small teams. You'll see actually in this upcoming uh, Premier League game week that I think people will see that a lot of the smaller teams come, you know, and get some big results because they've had more time to rest. Those players are ready for this, whereas we've got players here, there, and everywhere. Cool, cool. Um, score predictions. That's everyone's score predictions. Yeah, for, for let's not game. do that. 2 0 Chelsea. Uh, 3 0 three nil to uh, Bournemouth. I'm not even oh. joking. Oh, no. um, 1 0. 1 0. I'm saying 1 0. 1 0. I'll go for the 1 0 Jorginho penalty 
because I don't know who else is scoring. <laughs> I can see Jorginho. Up. Penalty opener, I'm not going to lie. I already see it. So I, I can guarantee... One step closer I, to top goal scorer. I guarantee oh, we're going to either... What, the goal scorer for Bournemouth, if they score, is either going to be Stanislas, because I swear he always scores against us, or Solanke. Solanke, yeah. Um, if Dom Sol Dominic Solanke scores against us, I swear to God, that's going to be the <laughs> The match-up is a real battle of who's improved over the World Cup break. Chelsea come into this game with four losses in the last five. Bournemouth, slightly better, coming in with three losses in their last five. Who can get the ball rolling first with the return of club competition? Predictions for this game. I'm coming in positively in terms of actually performance-wise. Albeit history is not in our favour. I'm going for a 3-1 Chelsea win. Bournemouth have not been great away from home. Winning just three of their last 20 in the Premier League. One of those was a 1-0 victory, however, at Stamford Bridge. But still, it's time to wake up, time to get a hold of ourselves and time to get a good streak of games under our belts. OK, really good to hear what people are saying about this fixture. Obviously, I think it's a must-win for Chelsea fans that, yeah, and, and when you face Bournemouth they are all aware of the whole you know bogey side tag but look where we are in the league compared to them I mean they're eighth but they're you know they're pushing on and we're we're in a relegation fight really and they want three points don't they but it doesn't always happen like that does it Chelsea uh, right Tom mm. are you gonna be okay doing the Teams. I'll give it. A, I'll give it a crack. If mate. you somehow got twenty two out of twenty two, oh. I think a knighthood yeah. deserves to be. Uh, it's gonna be difficult, mate. Delivered to Bournemouth. But... Um, yeah, it's gonna be difficult. I'm confident about the goalkeeper at least. Chelsea. Okay, we're Kepa. gonna start for Chelsea then, and you're going for Kepa. I know he's had a few. I've apparently didn't train loads and stuff like this, but they reckon he's fine and mm. he's a top goalkeeper. So will be in. I actually do think Lee James will play. I think he's had a. Okay. I think he's had a good break and playing over an hour. I think that's. They were doing that to make sure he's ready, I think. So, yeah, Reese James will be back in. Not great news for us. A centre-off, I'm going to put Chalibur in there okay. just because of what I briefly mentioned with Thiago in the, in the sense that he's... I mean, he played for Brazil. He's in his late 30s. He's sure he's going to need a bit of a break. And Chalibur's done well for him. Um, Koulibaly obviously went out to England for Senegal, but um, he's been back for a bit. So I think them two have been centre-offs. And I think left-back, I should be fine. Cucurella, because yeah. Chilwell was out. So he could easily go to a five and say whack a silver in there. But um, I, I think that in this type of game, I think he'll play a four and he'll want to get out. Right, OK, so yeah, you've gone four, two, three, one. Yeah. So who are going to be those two deep, uh, deep line players? I think yeah. one of them is probably self explanatory Yeah, Jorginho, he'll be in there. Obviously, Italy didn't even qualify, so um, he'll definitely be in there. And I'm going to put Mount in there to be a bit deeper. Obviously, this can easily change and, and he'll go, you know, he'll get forward more than Jorginho. Yeah. But um, I think just, just for the fact that Loftus-Cheek's out, uh, Kovacic probably out. I think Mount will be in there, Kante out as well. Um, on the right hand side, I'll go Pulisic. Um, thought he had a good World Cup for America, thought he caused England some problems actually, but he's had enough time, I think, so I think Pulisic should be on the right. I'm going to go Gallagher in that kind of more advanced centre midfield role um, in a 10. As I mentioned earlier, I do like Gallagher. And obviously, he went to the World Cup but didn't play any minutes, so he should be fine. Sterling, I think, will be okay. Yeah. Um, and even though we've got this good record against Chelsea, how oh many Sterling gosh. for City and Liverpool? Oh, you know what, mate? I was feeling confident until you mentioned he's, that. I, I forgot. Think, I think he's one of the. He's definitely in the top three of players that scored most goals against Bournemouth. Harry Kane's got to be up there. I think he is Super, up there. And, and Mo Salah. Salah yeah. I think um, the weird one is Lee Hughes is up there as well. Do you remember Lee Hughes? Yeah. Not currently old him. Yeah, yeah. But Sterling's like, he scored goals for <laughs> Liverpool and City against every time we played them, so we've got to watch out for him. Um, I'll go with Aubameyang up front, it could easily be Havertz, but I'm going to go with Aubameyang just because he won in the World Cup and obviously Brozier's out as well, so I'll go with that, but there's a, there's a few differences it could be, but I think I'll give it a right crack. He's giving it a crack. Right then, on to AFC Bournemouth then, mm. and here we've got, it looks like a, a five at the back, mate. Yeah, I'm going to go with it, I'm going to go with it. It could, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm unsure what we're going to do, but I feel like away at Chelsea, and I'm hoping a certain man will be back, which will mean we'll we'll go to a kind of three slash five. Okay, go on then. Talk me through your side then. Well, Travers going to stay in goal. Obviously, yeah. Neto's not back. And to be fair to Travers, I thought he, he made a few decent saves against Newcastle. Yeah, he did. Yeah, his confidence. He did. Um, he's done that against Everton as well. He like kind of ended uh, quite well, didn't he, before the break? So I'm pleased with that. Three centre halves. I will go with Mepham as the right centre back. Yeah. Um, he's been great for us. So yeah, keep Meps in there. In the middle, I will go Marcos Sanessi. Yeah. Just because I think he, he lacks a bit more pace than the next one. Oh, Lloyd Kelly. Lloyd I think, Kelly? I think he's going to be back. 
Um, that's why Ooh, I'm going. Okay. If Kelly's out, I think like the system might change and all this stuff. I'm going to take a gamble and think that just because there were murmurings against Newcastle and he wanted in the squad, yeah. it makes me think they're getting ready for this. And I think Kelly's pace is why I think he'd be left centre back wow. and we'd move Senesi into the middle because he lacks a bit of pace and he can be. And I think also Aubameyang, Stern and people like that, yeah. Senesi and Mepham, as good as they are, haven't got a lot of pace. And I think Kelly covering round would be, be ideal. So yeah, I'm going to shove him in there. Brilliant. Okay, um, right side? Uh, right wing back, I'm going to go Adam Smith. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, felt for him at the end, Cole, but he's self explanatory. Self explanatory for me, and then Jordan Zamora as the left wing back. Yeah, okay, into midfield. Lerma's back. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I think Lerma will be fine, so I'll put him the, probably the most deepest. I mean, it could be a double, but it, that, it's gonna be a three, so I think Lerma will be the deepest with Lewis Cook to the right. Um, I thought he was one of the ones that come out um, pretty well against Newcastle as well. And then Billing, who will probably be the one that tries to get more forward, but yeah. he'll be slightly on that left side. He likes to. Um, work with Zamora then he down that left so I think he might do that obviously I'm leaving out people like Anthony and Christie oh, yeah. and, and they could easily play but this is just how I think we might set up away from him Christie, uh, Christie I thought uh, he, he sort of disappointed me against Newcastle so he gets in such good areas he yeah. doesn't get into it too much but such good areas lively gets in the good opportunities and then his final that mm. final decision making always seems to be wrong um, he could easily play because of his work yeah. off the ball I'm just like you said because of his performance as well and I just think if Kelly's back this setup might be good to frustrate them mm. and then still give you options up front. And that's because I'm going to go for ex Chelsea striker Dom Solanke. Yeah. And he will definitely drop a little bit deeper. Yeah. Um, and then we'll go with the, the big man, Kiefer Moore. Yeah. Um, and I think that's how we'll play it. I think we'll we'll try and, that. if you look at that team on paper, that soak it up, but a threat down the other end of the pitch because you get Billy Moore bomb on, you, you get Zamura bombing on, and you've got Solanke's very tight on the ball, and then Moore's just a bit of a target. So, yeah, that's good. And we still, even though we've got a few injuries, I still think, you know, people, as I mentioned, like Jane Lantney, Dembele, Christie, we've got some options yeah. that can still, and we can we can change the game and be flexible and, and things. So yeah. and, and we're sticking with the festive theme because it looks like a Christmas tree, mate. So, yeah, beautiful. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. no, really happy with that. <laughs> All right, predictions. Yeah. Shall we, shall we, shall we go for it? Yeah, go on, you go. Um, two all. Two oh, two all. all. Two all. Two all. Okay. Uh, obviously, that's my optimistic hat is on. I'd love a two um, all. But I'm going to go for a two all. Uh, Tom? Uh, yeah, my head probably says they'll have a little bit too much and it could be like a, a, t a two nil Chelsea, quite mm. comprehensive. But, you know, always follow your heart. And my heart says we're going to go there and, and nick a point. I'm, I'm going to go one all. I think it will be similar to the game we had in the week against Newcastle where we'll soak it up a little bit. I'm hoping we get something on the break and more knockdown and slanky, take the lead and we don't quite hang on and maybe but get away with a nice nice point. So I'll go the same man, I'm gonna go for a point. I think that um one thing that I don't fear, and I hope this doesn't it be memed up at any point, is that I don't really fear when we play Chelsea that I think we alluded to it with the stats earlier. Like I don't, I never fear a battering. No, I mean it is it is gonna be a completely different side in terms of it's a potter Potter side and, and he will play quite expansive and there's always possibilities of that but I think yeah I agree the way we're set up and I think at the moment you alluded to their kind of results and it hasn't quite gone that way they're more likely to kind of if they do get a lead kind of keep the ball don't there's no point in going for a 2-3 because they just need the win so I probably agree with you there as you say it might come back to bite us but I think that's a fair assessment um but equally, we're not. It'll be interesting because Chelsea will probably think, mm. knowing us with the NEL days and stuff, that we might be a bit open, mm. which we won't be. We'll be back to that kind of soaking it up and trying to trying to nick a few things on the break. Simon Hooper is the man in charge for this game. He was in charge of two of our games last season. The home game against Blackburn Rovers. Oh, we lost that. That wasn't good. I think that was around Christmas. Didn't it? Was it? I can't remember when it was, but we lost it anyway. And then away at Huddersfield. We won that one. So that was all right. Nah, so yeah, Simon yeah, Hooper. Good. There we go. That is your match preview. So what can you expect from back of the net? Well, here we go. <laughs> Free for all at full time. Check YouTube, maybe two hours after full time, we'll have uh, fans raw views outside Stamford Bridge. Then on the following day, the match day vlog, the raw unadulterated experience of what it's like at Stamford Bridge. Also, We'll have a, a review show of some kind, I'm absolutely certain. Plus a, a small small matter of an away day review show, Tom. Oh, yeah, yeah, the old tier, we've got a little tier list, you'll have to check them out. And um, yeah, see what that'll be, yeah, I'm not sure where, where they'll go. That's, that's quite yeah. Over to, yeah, I've been a few times and enjoyed it, but yeah, we'll go off this one. It's 
that tier list now of the way days is kind yeah. of shaping up now. You've got some some at the top and some struggling. So let's see how Chelsea get on. There's a reason to subscribe if you're a Chelsea fan because we rate the away day experience not taking into account the football whatsoever. I think travel up to London's going to be Ooh. Pretty shady. So if you get the train, good luck. Hopefully it'll be all right. There's no strike action that day, but I think we're playing catch up. There's going to be few services, but hopefully enough to get you there. Other than that, of course, the roads I'm sure will be fairly busy, but safe driving. Uh, don't have too many beers on Boxing Day. Keep mindful that you got to be driving the next day. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll all look forward to a cracking game at Stamford Bridge. It's been a pleasure, Tom. As always, mate. Looking forward to this one. And looking forward to getting back on the road again. Come on. Come on, the cherries. Up the chairs. Up the chairs. Jingle, jingle bells, <laughs> jingle bells, jingle all the way. All the fun it is to see the Bournemouth win away. Hey!